I'm definitely a rookie. Learning from my mistakes and just trying to make a future with this. I've got a great crew. The best boss I've ever had. And I've worked for a lot of different I promised him something and it's not happening. I'm thinking I'm losing a half an ounce of gold a day. When you pan, it's super hot and then we just don't see it in the sluices. We're down to about 75,000 excavators. We probably have about $40,000 owing on the trommel. $700,000 in the hole. I bought family, from friends, uh, leasing companies, credit cards, on and on. Yep. So it's uh, in deep. Freddie and Water, my best hope, my last hope, the only hope I have. Gold, guys. Freddie Dodge. There's no guarantees in gold, buddy. And Juan Ibarra. All right, well, let's do it, huh? Have mastered the old out of the ground. Look at that. In the most rugged places on earth. I'm feeling a little sick, ready. Now, they rescue struggling miners. That's not good. Who risked it all to be rich. Whoa, 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 shut it down. But are about to lose everything. Eyeballs. To revive. Freddie and Juan engineer the impossible. Well, I've never heard of an undersluice before. Deliver some hard truths. This material you're digging now is totally... And track down the gold. That's what dreams are made of right there. But if they don't at least double the miner's gold recovery, they won't take a dime. In Ten times the amount of gold. That's off. <laughs> What do we know about these guys, Fred? You know, they're fairly new miners. They've only three years, so, you know, they're just getting their feet on the ground. You know, I kind of take it, Juan, that these guys are in pretty deep. Yeah, 10-4. Freddie and Juan through British Columbia on their way to the richest placer mine, 10 miles from the historic mining town of Barkerville. Country, Juan. Mining country and logging, huh? Yeah, they pulled a lot of gold out of this country back in the day. Here in the early 1860s sparked the Caribou Gold Rush. One of the thousands of prospectors, Englishman Billy Barker, struck it big. Huge gold nugget deposit paving the way for a mass migration. The town of Barkerville sprang up almost overnight as miners descend. Over 38 million ounces of gold has been mined here, worth $72 billion in today's money. Guys, how's it going today? I'm Vaughn. Nice to meet you, Fred. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Vaughn. What's Vaughn? your name? Rick. Nice to meet you, Rick. Rick. Nice to meet yeah. you. So how long have you guys been out here mining then? We had a half season here last year, and now this is our second season. So basically, it's, it's your mine site. That's so what's right. your, your job out here? Yeah, kind of do a little bit of, little bit of everything, kind okay. of jump around and, you know, well. Heated, huh? Figured out most problems. There's not, okay. not too much we don't work our way through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, yeah. Do you have a lot invested in it? Way too much. Way too yeah. much? Yeah, and deeper and deeper. I've dumped everything. Life savings is is on this property. Really? Okay. Everything. Vaughn holds everything until pressure. There's payments every month. I'm not sure how much they are, but I know they're between ten and 14000 a month. And every month, whether we're mining or not, old or not, those payments come out. I worry about keeping the plant running, but compared to what he's worried about, it's a, there's a big difference in worry. Mine's easy. Do you have any gold we can look at? Yeah, I do. I happen to have a vial here. Pretty fine, flowery. Hard to catch this moment. Every week I have to sell my gold to make bills. Yeah. Yeah. That's understood. Yeah. I'm at my wits end and need, need gold. more gold. So bad. What's your goal for the season? 200 ounces. I've got 30. I need another 170 ounces. That's a big, that's a big, big jump. Yeah. Yeah. It in the mining season. Every day counts. Every day. What have you been getting so far daily, roughly? About an ounce and a half. Yeah. Yep, and that's running 12 hours, 200 ounces this year. It's it's bankruptcy. Then what do you need to get to get through the season and make bills? Yep, two ounces a day would just two ounces do it. That's where you guys come in. Half an ounce more gold a day would get them an extra eighty-eight thousand dollars needed to prove through to the end of the season. Without it, they will be forced to shut the mine down. It's easy mining. Infrastructure is all here. We just need recovery, and it's not happening. There's something. There's something wrong, and uh, we need you guys. Well, let's watch you run. Yep. Sounds great to me. It's fired up.
Vaughn, you know, you know, he's got his entire life savings invested into it. It's a serious situation here. You know, we're going to have to be able to get him up to two ounces a day in order to be some profitable for him. First bucket, one. Step in, start feeding the plant. Right on. Juan's operator, Stefan, pay dirt into the hopper, which then travels up a conveyor before dropping into a 21-foot rotating trauma. A spray bar blasts in small material and gold through the screen and down into the 24-foot sluices, where gold is caught in the mass. Morning. Rick will be feeding me in the rock truck, and I'll haul pay to that site, and Steph will run, run it into the Grizzlies, and uh, we're rolling. Stefan Gervais has been working with Vaughn since day one. This is my happy place here. It's so peaceful. A little noisy, but peaceful. Rick's buddy, Lenny, completes the crew. Looks good. We're running. Everything's turning. Feeding it pay. He said the surface. Right there, huh? Lightly concentrated. Yeah. Very lightly. Yeah. With lightly concentrated gold throughout Vaughn's claim, touched by the old timers, but with modern machinery, the ground can still be profitable. I know there's lots of gold in this ground. Hoops and everything go between the boulders, so it becomes really hard to separate. Look at the organic sticking in the screen. It's going to be an issue. With all the organics that are stuck to the screen, there's a real good chance that we're losing material that should be sluiced. Roots and sticks from the shallow granics clog the streams, meaning gold-rich material may be lost out the end of the trauma. I got a pan full. I'm going to get water in there, wash it up. Well, if you look here, there's a few pieces of gold that should have made it down to the sluice box that never had a chance to get recovered. Get all the material to the plant, you wash it, and uh, for you just to spit it out, that's never a good way to do business. So. Uh, that's something we need to work on. Holy shit. Pretty violent one. Too violent. A little except. The water at the top of the sluice box is running too fast. They're actually running light. And there is not enough pay dirt running through the sluice. Line. They're running about 40 to 45 yards an hour, counting buckets. And uh, the sluices, from what I feel right now, can handle. You know, double that. Sluices run light on material. Finer gold may be washed out of the mess and into the tailing below. How come you are our? We've, we've tried, and it just seems to pack our sluices right away. Your sluices aren't packed, though. When we were down there earlier, we were kind of saying they're, they're running a little light. They're a little they're light. Lean. Yeah, light. they're running lean. We just found that when we shut down the sluice box, it was so full, that's why we back a bit. You can never judge a sluice box when you shut it down. You always have to judge a sluice box while it's running because it's a whole different environment when you shut down. Yeah, material it's lean. Sluice. Yeah. One of the biggest problems I think we're seeing here, Juan, our material going down those sluices. Yeah, you know, realistically, we ought to be able to turn up the feed on this plant by double. Double it. If your hydraulic oil getting hot, it will slow them down. It's quite intimidating having experts such as Juan and Freddy here looking at everything. And we know there's issues, but we'll see what the pros think. <laughs> That's uh, four hours right there. Want to call it? Yeah, sure. We'll do it. In. Yeah. This is the last bucket of the day, boys. Thank you, sir. Good news is we did notice a few things that we can definitely improve on. So that's, that'll be we a knew that was coming. Yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's pull the box and let's get it cleaned up. Yeah. And we'll see you in the morning. Vaughn has everything on the line, and uh, he's got a lot of guys here that are depending on him being profitable so they can get a paycheck. His season goal is 200 ounces for the season. He's barely got 30 ounces in. We got our work cut out for us. our gold guys it's good stuff just need more <laughs> yeah just need <laughs> on the riches claim in british columbia good morning guys good morning hello hello freddie and juan arrive for the results of the four-hour test well moment of truth huh ready for this yep well she zeroed out you want me to pour it one pour it fred see where we're at Point four seven, close to half yeah, ounce. Yeah. It's not good. 
standard for what we're doing here. It's just well, that's uh, exactly the numbers of what you said too. Yeah, it is. So for four hours, yeah. half an ounce. Yeah. So you said you're doing an ounce and a half in twelve hours, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big gold as well, so it's all fine yeah. like that. And what were you saying? You got to get two ounces a day to be able to make this work, huh? Yeah, one and a half isn't cutting it. More we're always it's just always been around this, you know, five grams plus out of or this, minus. out yeah. of this cut. Yep. Yeah. You got a lot of it too, right? We do. Yeah, we got a thousand acres of this. Uh, yeah, this material. You know, it's easy, at least. I mean, it is. You aren't taking having to take ten feet over burden off of it's the yeah. the great thing about it. I think what we need to do next is let Freddie and I figure out a plan for you guys. Okay. And then uh, we'll come back and talk to you and see what you guys think. Here's Very your well. gold. Thank all you, right. sir. Thank you. Don't spend it all. <laughs> <laughs> it's already spent. <laughs> Think on the plant one the plant that they have ready is completely 100 percent driven by hydraulic the reason why they're not they're not increasing their production they can't run it any faster than it is heating up. yeah if we put a liquid cooler or a heat exchanger yep. it allows us to actually be able to run that plant a little little harder yeah because it'll cool that yeah cool that hydraulic fluid down a lot so by by cooling that that hydraulic fluid we actually can run more material through it and get more gold well you know you see how those organics are plugging up you know this yeah. right on the tailings on the trommel, Fred, I did find some gold. Should have went through. Yeah. You think about like a street sweeper brush. Okay. So we mount it on the side. The weight of it goes down. It's turning. It's free energy that'll help pull those organics out of there. Yeah. It may or may not work. It's worth the shot because yeah. right now it's absolutely clogged up. And if we start my worries, we'd make a mess. So we get the production up yeah. and get the sluices where they can handle the up yeah. production. Yeah. Yeah. One doesn't go without the other. So all those things together means more. The hydraulic system that powers the plant overheats, restricting its speed. Freddie and Juan will fix a heat exchanger, cool, and double the process speed. Roots and vegetation clog the trommel screens, reducing the ability to catch gold. In rescue, Juan will construct a line of brushes to sit on top of the rotating drum, freeing the screens and allowing more gold to sluice. Finally, Freddie will modify Vaughn's sluice boxes, recycling the existing riffles and narrowing the bottom sluice to fine gold. How's it going, guys? Good, how are you guys? He's good, guys. Good. Doing all right? So, watching the plant run, we actually uh, saw that you know you can actually run feeling the sluice boxes. Freddie was able to determine yeah. you know, the, the boxes, they're, they're starving for material. You know, we're hoping we can get you up by 50% more production. What we want to do is now that we're going to be running more material, it's going to be that means more organics are going to be going through the trommel drum. So That's what we right. want to do is build a scrubber for the outside of the trommel to be able to drag some of that out of it. So your hay with the gold in it to get to your sluice box instead of puking gold out the end. I went down on the end of the trommel, grabbed yep. a pan of material. Yes. And I did find a couple right? you know, off the trommel end. Right now, it's an issue. Once we start running more material, it's going to be a real big issue. Mm -hmm. In order to be able to run more material, we're going to put a little more strain on your yep. and put a heat exchanger in there yeah oh, okay and by putting that cooler in on the hydraulics you're going to be able to run more material per hour yeah without your system overheating next to your ground yeah the most valuable real estate is that sluice box yeah because that's yep. where all you know all the recovery takes place by fixing the sluices we're going to catch probably 10 percent more gold in your sluices mm -hmm. and that up you know 50 percent you know yep. it could be more than 50 percent yeah it's going to take about six thousand dollars in material to do it what we'd like to see is four ounces to season yep. but if we don't double your recovery, we won't take a cut. So double or nothing. So what are your guys' thoughts? You feel uh, feel good about that? We're not in a position to say no, and we, okay. we trust you guys 100%. Yeah. Well, it just sounds great to me. You, Ricky? Yeah. yeah. No, well, like deal it. then. Like well, we better start making some phone calls, Thank get all the material we need. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds good. We have to trust them. We're trying our hardest, but we're not the professionals. So to run some more material through the plant, and the ground is consistent. We're going to get the goals. It's a 48 by uh, 35 and a half. That's that. We'll get rid of these riffles. Freddie and Rick begin tackling the sluices. You want me to cut these or you're going to? I'll cut if you want to, and then yep. I'll cut other things. Rick's over there. We're repurposing riffles. While he's doing that, I'll get all these angle clips cut. Talking to Rick, he's a mechanic, he's welded. So, you type guy to help on a job like this. See so what I'm trying to do, Rick? We're gonna flatten this one out, right? Your top flus? Yeah. And turn it a little bit, right? 
this top box was way too violent. That's because of the pitch on it. You that know, box. for your gold, you aren't catching one ounce nuggets out here. You're catching 20 mesh gold. It brings that fine gold way up. Yeah. Well, the bottom sluice was uh, plugging up. So we didn't have enough water in that box when we ran that test run. We starved for two sides inside of it here. We're going to narrow it up by a couple feet. It'll run better. Narrowing the bottom sluice run should even out the flow. I balls. What got you into gold mining? Good trips and you know, found some gold and got, got hooked. A, yeah. The thing I enjoy the most about being out here is is being in the mountains and just be at the end of the road out here. There's nobody around. I was a, a tradesman living in the city for a lot of years. It's always been our dream to live out in the out in the mountains and from the rat race. Gold mining is definitely one of the last ways of being a pioneer in this day and age. There's, you know, there's not many things you can do where you can be off doing your thing and, and be, you know, sustaining an income. And that's exactly why I love it. You got kids? Just the one, four and a half. Pretty young. 21 pounds. <laughs> he's, a, he's a big boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you got a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. It has to work. That sluice is warped. <laughs> what a mess, huh? Yeah. We'd have to start over building. We don't have time for that. Yeah. The bottom sluice box is bent, meaning the new sides of the box won't sit flush. The gap. I mean, it's still going to catch gold, but it's going to take twice as long to fix. have a little list here of all our bills and our monthly payments we make. On the richest claim in British Columbia. How are we looking here? We owe 30000 a month with everything. Well, our bills are adding up again. We're looking at fuel is ten grand. we have got parts for five grand. Coming in, like, no tomorrow. The guys are behind on their wages, so they're going to be wanting some cash soon. Be screaming, yep. Yep. This is his dream out here. He will make it successful. It will be... It will be full of gold. We don't like to have any down moments because it does bring the whole operation down. It's good to have good spirits and just stay positive and it'll work. It's going to work. And we'll have a good life. We'll have a, a bright future is what we always say. This is for our future. If it doesn't work this season, it's done. It's, it's done. The, dr the dream is over. that and get that drilled out. Juan and Vaughn begin surgery on the hydraulic system. Perfect, thank you. The goal? Increase the wash plant's ability to run pay quicker. So this has, has the inlet and outlet. The hydraulic oil is going to come in here, get cooled off by the water that's flowing inside this canister. And what it does is it actually cools down that hydraulic oil when it comes out. It should be cooler. What that's going to do is going to allow them to be able to run this a little higher and a little harder and get more through the plant. We could actually run fresh water to this and have nice hot water coming up. Hey! See? You gotta think about everything. <laughs> That's right. There we are. Good. Perfect. All right, well, let's put these hydraulic lines on it. The plumbing skill's coming in. Back to my root. There it is. Yeah. All we gotta do is put it up on top, zip tie it up to that hose, and call it good. Pretty simple. The heat exchanger will cool the hydraulics that power Vaughn's wash plant. Now we'll be able to run the trommel faster without heating up. It's uh, it's perfect. Hi ho, hi ho. Well, this angle should fill these gaps in. Plug the gaps caused by the warped base. Lengths of flexible angle irons will be welded to the bottom of the sluice. This will work. We didn't have time to build them. Welds look good. Are they all right? Yeah. Weld it for strength and then seal it with silicone. Yeah, that sounds good, Freddie. The silicone makes the box watertight, and the new sides have narrowed the slip to keep a consistent flow of water. One down. Next job, adjust the angle of the top sluice. That uh, box was just way too, too steep and too violent yeah. before. 
more. I think we'll try her there. Yeah. So basically what we got left here on the sluices is uh, get them cleaned out first, put some ripples in, we'll get her done. Just throwing the mats in here. Good. Over a hair, but bit by bit. I'll always put a different gap, like an inch and a half on one, then a two inch gap between my riffles. It's a change. If you look where you have those changes, there's always some gold that likes that change. Yeah, yeah. Foot wide sluice box, a four foot wide, and over five feet here. Yeah. So hopefully, when we get running here, hopefully it'll. Uh... I'm sure it will, Freddie. <laughs> Sixty. Okay. Yeah. On the shaft. On the trommel, one's prototype brush fix, titation from the screen, is underway. So it'll be one big roller. Oh, okay. Um, yep. Arm that comes up across here yep. and hold the brush assembly. As it's going to use the brushes to be able to clean out the screens. Let me go down to the trailer. I'm going to start getting everything figured out on the computer. We'll start cutting out all the pieces, and if you want to come down and give me a hand, we can start welding it together. All right. Sounds good, buddy. The rotating brush assembly uh, is something we've never done before, but what we're going to do is we're going to repurpose brushes for like a street sweeper. We're going to build a new drum for it and put them on top of the trommel to be able to help it clean that organic material that's getting caught on the screens on the trommel. So these are those pieces and the spacers that we're going to put on the shaft to be able to hold the brushes in center. There it goes. Boom. Let's see what this looks like real quick. There it is. Perfect. Super happy with everything that's happened. Do some welding on some mounts, and I'm looking forward to it. Great, right, make some coffee. Ten miles from the mine site in British Columbia. Just trying to trying to make things work. Oh, <laughs> could you grab me a clean? <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's always in the city. We just didn't think we'd actually be able to ever make it happen. And well, now we're here, and now things are, you know, not not really working as well as they for us to stay here. So we want to stay in Wells. I want him to keep mining. That's what he loves to do. And yeah, I don't know. And I'm glad that you made. You know, there's there's also a breaking point where uh, it doesn't work anymore. So it's it's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty anxious days here. I know they can do it. They just need a little bit of help. At the Rich's Mine, the central core, which will hold the 24 mounted brushes, takes shape. Oh, I'm just getting rid of the extra parts. My hay has a lot of organics, so these scrubber brushes are going to take care of it. He told us in the beginning that you got quite a bit of money invested into this operation. You know, I came in with the basic equipment and just to get going, and uh, as it progressed, uh, more, more money, so I kept borrowing and borrowing from family and friends and just to keep this running. There has been no paying back of anybody. It's all sitting in the ground here and I need it. I uh, worked overseas for seven years in Africa, built hard rock, ended that career and went full force into plaster mining when I got back. And I, I have to stop borrowing. I, I see the end. It's, yeah, it's not pretty at all. Nice. We're sliding the bristles on right now. They're tight, which is good. It's perfect. And you know, these are just common street sweeper brushes, so mm. you'll be able to gra grab these at any rental yard and put them back on. Huh. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We're plugging away here, and it's almost done. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, we can't wait to see that trouble fire up again, start running some dirt to uh, make some money. I'm just hoping that it works properly. We told them double or nothing, so if we don't get that double mark, you know, we don't get paid for, for our labor, which I'm okay with. Honestly, I'm just happy to be here to help Vaughn and his crew because genuinely these guys need the help. Let's get it up there and get it on. Huh, good. I'll drive the truck up, and uh, if you want to bring that up, I'll pick it up off you. Yep. All right. See you in a second. The innovator that will clear the clogged screens is ready to install onto Vaughn's wash blend. 
I'm really excited to put this uh, brush assembly together. It's something new that, um, if it works, this could be a game changer. Got her, Fred. Got her. Once held in place, one to the side of the trummel. Okay, I'll get up there. Thank you. That's okay. I like it. It's definitely not the most convenient workspace, but we're so close right now, I just gotta deal with it and get it put together and uh, get this and get going on our test run. The arms are fabricated to hold the weight of the 400 pound brush assembly. These, uh, these arms, they're on bearings, and that way the weight of the brush and gravity will do its thing and push down on the screens and clean them out. Are you ready for these or not? Yeah, let's do it. Arms are braced to strengthen the build. Almost there. Almost ready to run. Mucho grande. Mucho Way, better, Way better, Almond. Way better. Decent gold in the sluices. Last weld, Wano. Last one, Freddy. Done. Let's run a plant, catch the gold. Let's do it. Run. Hopefully it works as good as it looks. So we saw nearly half an ounce yep. on the last test run. I'd like to see an ounce of gold this time. An ounce of gold would be fantastic. One way to find out. Let's run it. We got to run, okay. All right, let's do it. I take all the improvements for where they should be, and uh, we're going to feed rate, so it's going to be a super exciting time. Next four hours is going to be hectic, hectic. Fifth in target, Vaughn's plant must recover over an ounce of gold. All in all, I'm really happy with what we were able to do. I'm just not 100% sure that we're going to be able to plant that we wanted, but really uh, tomorrow we'll find out. We'll find out what we were able to accomplish here. First bucket, Vaughn. Perfect. Well, let's see how the hydraulics are doing. Staying cool. Right now, that's extremely cool. It is. One's heat exchange hydraulic oil that powers the plant cool, allowing the wash plant to be dialed up. That's pretty neat, Fred. You can actually see the bristle. The Trummel brush is a game changer. By keeping the screens free of debris, more gold can pass into the sluices. Than they were a lot. And we're running more material, so yep. we got more organics coming through. Exactly right. Nope, they're doing their job, bud. Yep. Good job, Fred. Okay. okay. We did all right. Freddie and I have built a lot of things over the years. We had an idea this would work, but you really don't know until you actually put it in and run it. And right now it's doing great for them. Well, you build with the brush. It's uh, it's a work of art. It's it's working flawlessly. Definitely the pressure's on. We're sending a lot more material. Brand new problem for us. We're really having to rush. It's a good problem to have. It seems like it's moving in the right direction all of a sudden. Vaughn definitely looks a lot happier with the way that things are, are running now. We're getting more yardage in, and that, that in turn should mean more gold. First time out to the mine. Figure what a bit, why not a better time than when Freddie and Juan are here. He's definitely interested in it. Candace was out here helping me a bit last year. She's run rock truck a bit on a few different sites and that, so once he's old enough, no problem. A couple years or so. Uh, two or three more years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Stefan, you got a copy? Last bucket. No, last bucket of the day. Holy, these are working way better. You can tell. Well, we're seeing some gold anyway. That's promising. Yeah. Well, what do you guys say? You guys want to clean it up and uh, we'll come back in the morning and that sounds great. That, that sounds right. great, guys. Great. Sounds good, guys. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. These guys are going to win because better production, better plants not plugged up with organics. Uh, so all in all, it's a win for all of us, but pretty sure it's going to be a really big win for them. Want a drink, Brad? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of nice, Freddy. Beautiful scenery. Pretty lucky, Fred. Brought pocket oysters again, huh? Yeah, these are pretty fancy too. Nice to relax for a minute. You know what that means, Lon? Yeah, probably time to get back at it, huh? Time to get back to work, yep. Lunch is over, Fred.
morning. Oh, Ready to weigh some gold up? You betcha. On the richest mine in British Columbia. You should probably do it inside, huh? Yeah, it's raining. Yeah. It's raining out here. Success or for a week of resourceful upgrades all comes down to the final gold weigh. You got the gold? I do. Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Really. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's feeling good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys ready? Let's oh, yeah. Ready. Let's so. do this. To prove the mine's viability, the result of the second test must deliver at least one ounce of gold. Well, there's 0.47, right? Oh, that yeah. was the first clean up. <laughs> Look how much more is left. We're a third of the way through what's in that jar, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. There's an ounce. Yeah. An even ounce right there. Oh. Holy <laughs> There's still oh, gold in the that. jar, guys. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> what? Oh. 1.58 for four freaking hours. <laughs> hey! So that's four and a half ounces of yeah, great, right? Nice. It's a 12 hour day. <laughs> and that's the same exact pay you guys were running before, right? Yeah. And that's, oh, yeah. There's a huge improvement exactly. there. Freddie and Juan's fixes have tripled count. It turns your your dream out here into a reality. Oh, it yeah. does. It really oh, yeah. does. It yeah. completes, that changes it changes everything, game, right? You know, yeah. you know yeah. from just barely scraping by having the money to be repairs and everything else. Now that actually puts a little bit of cushion in, you know, in the bank. It certainly yeah. does want. Yeah. Freddie, amazing. <laughs> Look at all the fines in there. There's yeah, a lot more fines. That's, that's the difference. Yeah, I there's a lot more fines yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I still don't believe that. That's, yeah. Yeah, that, that's awesome. <laughs> it's amazing. No, I, yeah. Yeah. Like it, it, it's, we definitely knew we yeah. Not like that. Not like that. No. You know, I haven't seen you smile this much. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or Rick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially me. I know, yeah. It's been for a while. and. It, uh, it means a lot to Vaughn, I know that for sure. And it, it means a lot to everybody. It's, yeah. It means everything. And I, I really, really, like, sincerely. You're yep. Yeah. You're welcome, all yeah. you guys. Oh, you're not getting away with a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> no, Very welcome, buddy. That's awesome. Woo! <laughs> Holy <laughs> yeah. Really black. That's awesome. Yeah. It changes everything. Yep. Yep. There's a huge relief off these shoulders, and uh, everybody that believed in me. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's good now. What is it? Oh, geez. Means uh, the dream moves forward, and uh, in a healthy way, I can move forward. They have a real possibility with their dream. You know, before they were, you know, week to week, selling every bit of gold that they had to try to pay bills uh, without any reassurance or any future out here. But now they have a solid plan. They have a solid plan and a real future to be able to make their dreams come true. It's going to be life changing for them. It was once a thousand, then it dropped to 150, and now it's a ghost town. 150 in this area. Ooh. The saloon, huh? Must have been, huh? Just think, you know, the guys they might. Yep. A lot of those old gold miners, they came to get rich, but they spent every bit of it, yeah. blew it all. Yeah. Old rocker. Yeah. It was way faster than a gold pan. They could run 100 times the amount of material they could panning. Pretty neat to see. It is. Check on the guys. This is our third time in Montana in the last few years, huh? Yeah. So what do we know about these folks, Fred? Well, their name are Rich and Kevin, and uh, they're brothers. They've been in here two years. Nice. Freddie and Guy country, 70 miles west of Helena, sneaking towards a struggling mine owned by the Dietz brothers, who, after decades of dream of mining gold. Do you know anything about their plant? Well, they said they've got a small trommel they can't seem to keep running. They seem to think the miners are kind of superstitious. I kind of feel like you uh, make your own luck and you make your own destiny. Do you know uh, Montana's motto? It's actually or gold. And I'm not sure on clock that. Silver. Yeah, 10 for gold and silver. In the early 1860s, the discovery of large gold and silver deposits attracted so many fortune seekers to this region, new territory called Montana. State capital, Helena 
started off as a mining camp in 1864, which is pulled out, created more millionaires per capita than anywhere else in the nation. Even today, there are nearly 5,000... Hi, how's it going, guys? Yep. Freddy. Nice to meet you. Hey. Freddy? Yep. Nice to meet you. Rich. 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 Nice to meet you, Rich. Yep. Thank you for coming. They've mined a lot of gold out of these valleys. Yeah. Yeah. This land was for sale, and I called Kevin up. We knew there was gold up here with the history, and we found gold on it right off the bat. Made me wanted to be a gold miner was my quest for adventure. Spend a week here, a week there, gold mining. Uh, and now it's turned into... Now, both in their 60s, brothers Rich and Kevin Dietz quit the daily grind in pursuit of gold. I was in a rock and roll band until I was years in the insurance field. Uh, started in sales and moved my way up to eventually a vice president. For the last 20 years, I've been uh, doing different jobs, but I had a dream of doing this. The brothers were brought up by their mom in Casper, Wyoming. It was hard for her. She had three jobs. I'm the oldest, then my brother Randy, and then Kevin, and then Kyle. I became the young son who got picked on. Consequently, I left early until four years ago that we... Uh, acquaintance may be a better word than brothers. And we reconnected through. We're really glad you're here because we need help. How much gold did you produce last year? Uh, we produced five ounces and moved about 500 yards of dirt. dirt. And we've got about three ounces. So, so we went back the way. It's going the, yeah, the wrong direction. What are you guys looking at for amounts of gold you need to keep mining in here? What's the most you've ever done in a day? Half ounce? Yeah, maybe. So you're not making money is what you're saying? No, we're not even close. We're, we're, I have $75,000 in cash invested. Rich probably has three, four times that. And... Yeah, I don't know. Basically, I've put everything I've got into this. I've sold my uh, classic car, my 68. Uh, so I, everything I've got is invested right here, right now. If this doesn't work out, I start over. After sinking or into the operation, so far, the return has not been worth the risk. I named my wash plant Voodoo. It consumes you. It really does. This is a feeder. The chain is broken there right now. This is our excavator. We've had lots of lawn trees. I don't want to just throw it away without potentially seeing some sort of return on investment. Our land has been heavily confident when we bought the land, but the old timers have not got it all. But now I'm losing hope that there's commercial gold on this land. And as we stand here today. I'm hoping that Freddie and Juan can help us learn how to be better gold miners. We are just a small operation. Everybody. Well, we kind of got a lay of the land now. Why don't we take a look at the plant, Fred? Yeah, yeah let's, let's do, do it. it. Did you build this plant? Yeah, it's kind of my creation. Rich built his entire trommel by watching internet videos. Okay, 20 yards an hour. That's an old sander. Yes, and it's not really made for rocks that we're running. We've had considerable breakdown. Yeah. The breakdown. So this isn't working right now at the moment, huh? No, the chain is yeah. broken right now. Okay. We can run the hydraulics and the belt, but we think we can't run. But then you get it up here and the material in the real world is just not doing what I thought it would do. So how are you feeding the plant? Or is it we're just, what we're doing is we're just going up here and dumping we on top feed of that directly conveyor. right okay. into here. And then it goes up into the hopper. Okay. Well, if have a look at the sluices, A-1-0. Here's a nugget trap. What's the biggest nugget you found? About a width of a dime. It was only like about, uh, I think, three grams or two grams. Board. Rich and Kevin brought in friends Lynn and Jerry. Hey, gentlemen, dude. How's it going, guys? Lynn? Lynn? Freddy. Nice to meet you. And Jerry. What Freddy and I really like to do is we like to come into a situation, kind of see what you guys got going on, do a test run, and Freddy and I are just going to walk around and see, and what, see what, what's happening. See what your problems are. Test. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's do it, huh? Let's Start. fire it up. Fire it up. Water's coming, here it comes. Fire up the trouble. Kevin wants me. So my job is to watch that the uh, conveyor belt runs well. So if he's speeding a little bit at a time, so we don't trade him because it can break down at any time. provides a steady feed of pay onto the belt. With it out of commission, Jerry must carefully load directly on it empty for a third of their run time and slashing yardage by roughly 30%. The conveyor...
before it passes through the eight-foot trommel, rich fabricated in his workshop. Material then drops into the 20-foot sluice run. Riffles. I'm looking. Running for now, bro. But we don't care about that. Now that son of a gun packed. Yeah, it is. Holy cow. Pack it up machine is what That's they call here. A pack it up, gold losing machine is what it is. Yep. There's nowhere for it to sit. Rich's handmade riffles are already clogged. Any fine gold will be washed off the end of the sluice. We've got a way to get that material evened out. Right now it's screwed up. Guessing, but I'd say 75% of the material that was ran through that plant. Was Just dirt. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it right where you it. found it. You know, and the yeah. problem is if you go in there and you pan, you see the odd piece and you get excited, you want to run it all. But the truth of the matter is you're wearing down your plant, you're wearing minimal, minimal gold in it. This concerns me greatly because I want my family to be successful. Mm -hmm. But the money runs out. That's how gold mining is, though. I mean, it's always a gamble. And that's my concern. So this is what you're digging? Yeah, this is the material we know where the layer is. After a disappointing first test run, Freddy's first step, investigate the Dietz brothers' pay. How are you? Putting the excavator out there, but went down the day before you guys got here. That almost looks like a mix of gravel and volcanic ash. Powder on you? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You can see it, Juan, even though it's wet. Powder. So it's a stream, and then whatever volcano put this ash down, the Adel Mountains in Montana is an ancient volcanic field. Active, its volcanoes have eroded away, but the ash from their eruptions remains in the subsoil, mixed with the region's pockets of gold. Probably not very good stuff right there. When we got down to this stuff, we really weren't planning to play with that. When we first got there, 
We can help you guys find more gold. We can help you guys catch more gold, but we can't put gold in the ground. So that's what I'm concerned about. And just know on this property, that's what it's going to be. It's gonna, you know, you can't just take the whole dang hill because it has right. a little bit of gold in the beginning. I'm right. sure there's a tremendous amount of gold around here, but this whole pit right here. So this is the retirement plan then? I'm all in. I got this is the only thing I've got. I've auctioned off everything I've got, dealed in my hand, and I believe, and everybody we've talked to believes the gold is here. Ooh. <laughs> gives people wealth and sometimes gold takes people's wealth Take away. away. Hopefully we can help you where you're not uh, throwing away your retirement money to go gold money. Without Juan and Freddy, we're going we're gonna to tear a whole hair, hill out and not get nothing. Without them, this thing doesn't go. We're in another one of those situations here where we really, really want to help these guys, but we're only here a few days. Just driving in, Juan and myself, it wasn't for nothing. There was gold here, and there's still gold here. Just got to find it. Running, what'd you find? One spec. One spec. With the time we have, I think a big part of what we need to do here is help them get on some better ground. I agree with you because it doesn't matter if, yeah. if there's no gold in the dirt. And possibly fix that traco. We definitely need that traco runner to be able to go up and prospect. But we can't do anything without it. There's a few things that we can do on the plant. It's got a steel plate, yeah, with chain links on the side. They said it's broke, so. It's made to just move sand, and they're putting rocks in it. Yeah. We're binding up and popping it up. And then the sluice, the water's going to one side, and the material's going to the other side. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Some plates in, underneath at an angle, and force it to the center, and you know what's going to happen when it comes out of the center. And it's going to spread, spread properly, yeah. right? The structure of the box is good, but pulls, pull downs, carpets, under carpets, everything. Everything in it. It'll be a complete box. 2,600 total to do it all. In, just in this ounce of gold apiece. So 2,600. Plus two ounces of gold. Yeah. I know Kevin's really nervous about the cost of all of this, mm -hmm. but that's what we need. Identify three key problems with the operation. First, the drive chain on the feeder's conveyor ensure a consistent feed of pay and increase the yardage run by 30%. Second, uneven distress the sluice to clog up. Juan and Freddy will upgrade the carpet and riffles in the sluice box metal plates to force the flow of material to the middle, creating an even spread. Third, and most impair the excavator and find more gold on the site. All these fixes will mean nothing. Good, how you doing? Good. Doing all right? A couple things that we want to do, we want to fix your guys' feeder. Obviously, you know it's broke. What chain, yeah? Your sluice is plugged in. Mm -hmm. So any real fine gold that's in your deposit, you're going to lose a lot of it. Right you'll see that your water is going there in the first part of that sluice box, yes. right? Yep. So I want to design a system to get that material centered. And then it can actually disperse out. For all of good miner's moss. So it actually has a place for that gold to get locked in there and get trapped. It's expensive. You know, it's like 700 bucks for a roll. And then you yeah, actually have to bring out an impact, ranches and everything else to be able to get it all taken apart. What we want to do, we want to eliminate all that and actually build a set of uh, proper tie downs for it. Hammer. Yeah, quick, easy. He you knows how to use one. one. So 2600 is what we're looking at in material. And then one ounce of gold a piece for our labor. We aren't making really anything on it, but it covers our expenses. I totally appreciate the information, and uh, um, it's no surprise that we're having problems uh, and, and opened up my eyes to uh, what's possible because we're losing a yeah. lot, and that's got to be fixed. I totally understand. Sometimes you got to uh, invest money to make money. You always do. Sometimes you, you know, go a little bit further. If we walk away now, we're not going to get any better than what we are. Well, let's do it then. Thanks, okay. Kevin is, is a numbers guy, so when he when he says do it, it was it was a you know it was a big load off of my mind. I'm buddy will will learn from it and grow together. The reason why it matters so much to me for my, with my brother is that I miss that family connect still hopeful that that will change with the finding of sufficient gold. How's it going, Kevin? Good, Brady. How you doing? Bring your map. Oh, I did. 
Here's a look at it right here. In Ann, Montana, Freddie Dodge and mine owner Kevin Dietz ready the hunt for ground the old timers missed. Shaped like a snake. Yeah, it has all the markings in terms of uh, the boundaries, mm -hmm. but it also has areas of where the uh, past uh, miners have mined. Why don't I... What we're doing right now is more important than anything else we're doing in the world. You just sit there and polish it every day because you don't have any gold to run through it, right? That's true. I want to show you something on this rocks over here. Okay. You see that? Yep. You can see how the old timers stacked those walls in there? Yep. For them to go through that much work to do that, evidently there was some flipping good gold rates slowly, slowly, slowly working down. So one time this whole pile would have been over the creek and the water would have flowed through it. Millions of years, it covered the gold rich creek at the bottom of the hillside. To recover the gold, the old timers ship it by hand and used it to build a retaining wall, preventing further rock slides while they mined. Well, let's keep looking. I want to look at it from the top and kind of get a lay of the land. Yeah, for sure. The gravel bed that was in the bottom of the earth. Yeah. Because once upon a time, that creek that's down in the bottom was here and it's eroded its way down through. In here, if there was a spot I would dig, it'd be this area. Because it's flat enough, it could hold gravels. And lo and behold, an old timer punched a hole in there. Let's see what might be in there. That one's been washed a little bit. Rocks walked a dry riverbed, which could be teeming with gold brought down from deposits further upstream. What I think we ought to do up on the next, yep. bring it up here and run a trench across. Did we find anything? Yeah. You can see oh, it's a pain in the butt to get to, though. On the other side of the claim, Juan and Rich rush to repair a punctured hose in the mini excavator. We don't have a whole lot of time, so fortunately we were able to get the hose in and hopefully it'll help them out to, to be able to find them. Don't smack my truck, please. Okay. No leaks, looks good. An hour later, with the excavator back in the hill. starting to build back in me that I had uh, a couple of years ago. You see how these rocks are shingled? Yeah. There are flat rocks are laying flat. Means it's been worked by water. This layer from right here certainly isn't the same type of stuff that we were digging. This side of this wall is tailings, I think. See how much tighter these are? Yeah, yeah. I'm getting the odd rock. Now this side, that's tailings. Tailings. That's one more thing that I've learned from you. What I'd like to do is... Freddy's test hole cuts directly through a spot between the old timer's tailings and untouched ground, which should contain gold. Copy, go ahead. Freddy's got a bucket that we're going to put in your uh, skid steer. Copy that. It's very interesting watching a, a master of work who can read the signs of the rock and the land. It's looking good. There you go. Now dump. Thanks, sir. Freddy runs three yards through the high bank before he pans it. Well, let's see what's in it, huh? Yeah. Hopefully there's some gold in it. Yeah, hopefully there is. Ten colors. That's not good. Well, I don't know what to do now. Like five dollars worth of gold in the pan there. No, 25 cents worth of gold was in that pan. That's not enough. Uh, I have mixed emotions, you know. I got insides just, are you? 
where I draw the line is I'm very close. We're two years into this. I mean, literally, we're going down bankruptcy road. It's a basically tremendous amount of gold produced here. You can see it without somebody telling you. The amount of work they did in these valleys wasn't for nothing. There was gold here. Good left. And where the f do we find it? We're running out of time here, I'll tell you that. It's a beautiful place, but uh, at the same time, you gotta put food on the table. Anna around the Dietz mine in a last-ditch attempt to find the brothers some good ground. Kevin's put a lot of his finances on the line here. And, uh, I've seen his emotions roller coaster the past couple days. Found gravels that should have good gold in them. Not enough off the cliff. Most important thing in my mind right now is to find what gold's left on their property. The old timers hit it hard. You know, you can see a couple benches. It's an inside bend on this creek, that side is, which is good for gravel benches look at. We're just trying to pick through and find what the old timers couldn't get to. Water flows faster, rivers and creeks. The extra force of the water eats away at the bank at an increased rate. Gold bearing benches on this side of the time and their gold washed away. But the benches on the inside are more likely to stay intact with their gold. Still that sluice box down there, the water is shooting wide. The material stays on the inside. I just got to keep looking around and hopefully find some issue that we're having is the heavier material is coming down the sluice here and we're getting a lot of water here. So what we want to do is make sure that it's an even feed across the sluice box. And it attacks the issue of uneven flow. So we're going to force all the material to get concentrated into about an eight by 10. Once it hits that little concentration point, it'll fan out and then it'll actually have a more even feed down the sluice box. At the end of the day, the more even of a feed that we have on the sluice box, a lot of that finer gold. So it's something simple but it'll help the recovery. I'm gonna get it up to the cut table, get it all cut out, and then we'll get it installed. I got all the little pieces of design that we need to cut out. That flat back from us with it. Really? What I was thinking, Kevin, is get up in here and uh, punch a couple holes. Bend on the inside of an old meander. I think we should uh, punch some holes and check it out, yeah? Let's get the track going. Hopefully, uh, we have... found a layer if it's got decent gold in it that's about three feet thick here so could you take handfuls of the brown and throw it in the bucket and uh okay take it down and pan it that's that bucket all right perfect all righty thank you back in just a bit okay i'm doing a little pan and just to see if there's something in here it's showing some pretty good color right off the bat Freddy, how's it look? Not so bad. There were some chunks in it. Yep. This single pan from is as much gold as Freddy's previous bulk test. The old timers missed it. We found it. You found it, Freddy. We found I, it. I got it. Well, found it. <laughs> you guys want to start getting pay down so we can run a second test here? Yeah. I guess time will tell how much gold is in it. Freddy, uh, he's so knowledgeable. Uh, Rich and me. Freddie and Juan could help her. That's worth. That's worth more than gold would give you. For sure. It's now all hands on deck to fix the plant and make sure Freddie's prospect. So we got a broken feeder. We're not exactly sure what's wrong. They can't even use it. Got to lift it up and take a look. So uh, we got to get it apart. See what we can do with it. Pretty heavy. One's feeder fix will increase the amount of material fed into the world. Careful, guys. Don't trust it. How's it going, Wano? Hey, Freddy. How you doing over there? Good. 
on this bench over here. Yeah, how's it, how'd it look? There's gold in it. Is there? Yeah. We got the prospecting done, so I'm going to start working on that sluice box okay. where you started off. Yeah. What we're doing here is going to, in the sluice box, the system they had uh, definitely wasn't the greatest. It was plugged up all the way. It's going to save them time. The plant's not running. It's not catching gold. Last one. I was able to get it all taken apart and I got these links put back together. That just paddles are welded onto the links. And what happened was this side must have gotten caught up and it broke the links. Rich had a little section of chain left over, so I would pull a few links off of it and repair the links. When I had a zipper. Yeah, I know. This one's Velcro. Yeah. It's nice, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's my good vest. <laughs> I'm going to buy you a new one, Freddy. Here. <laughs> Poor little crow off. <laughs> Why would you do that? It was already off there, No, Fred. it wasn't off. It was Did ready you to... hear it go? <laughs> yeah, it was ready to come off. Oh, was it? You still got a good one. I'm done for the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to tear my Velcro up. <laughs> Western Montana. One leads the squad as they finish the fix. You're dead so far. Come on down. And one on this side. It's no showpiece, but look at that. It's in. Perfect. How's it going, Wano? Just got done here, so I guess wait for them to get all the pay down and yeah. we're ready to run. Yeah. That's the best gravel we've seen. Now we got to run it and see if there's any gold in it. I know Kev about everything going on here, but hopefully this will kind of alleviate some of that stress for them. I like these guys. I do too. Okay. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi, guys. Freddie and Juan spent the last five's operation. So I say we run 80 minutes, which is twice what we ran last time, so the math will be easy, and uh, we'll see how much gold's in it. Let's fire it. Fire it up. Before the hopper feeder was out of action, allow more pay through the plant. Material built up on one side of the sluice, blocking the riffles. Juan installed a across the full width of the box, alongside Freddy's rebuilt sluices with new riffles and custom carpets. But could be the key to keeping the brothers' mining dream and their friendship alive. First bucket. See if we can get some color here. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw gold in. First bucket's in, one. Water turned brown. This box now, one. Yeah. Before it was the same, the same, the same. Before the same. it was the same. Blood, 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 blood. All the way down. All the way. Yeah, go ahead. How's it going up there for you? Yeah, that material looks good. If you look at it from this angle, I like that flow much better. Got a chance. Oops. Way different than the stuff we've been running. A lot finer, isn't it? A lot finer. The tailings aren't fighting up as fast. All that matters is they're rolling. Look at how round that rover rock. Rock on. Look oh, on. hey. Look at that one. That's rounded. That's pretty good, bro. Huh? Look, we're going to get it. Yeah, it's rounded. Yeah, that's rounded. It's rounded. Twice what we did last time. So we'll see how much gold we get out of it. Hey, go ahead and turn it off, Kevin. Shut it. Really good. Look in there. Oh, this whole riffle's packed all the way into this corner. Wow. Oh, 
to see it, yeah. Moving everything going. Look at that. Just look down here. If you guys want to start knocking the boards and pulling the ripples out of here. Okay, we'll do it. All I need is a hammer. Look at that. No bolt. Nowhere to find that wrench. None of that. Look at that. Oh, How happy am I? Hey, Freddy, yo, do you have oil for this thing? It's not ideal, but it'll do something. It'll lubricate it. Hopefully, all that sugar will keep it uh, electrolytes. <laughs> we may have to spend half a day going through and logging and trying to clean. Well, it's never easy, but if it was ideal and easy, everyone would do it. It would be worth nothing. They're definitely off the beaten path, Freddy. Thanks for cutting all them trees. So, Fred, you were talking about these guys. What do they got going on up here? What well, sounds like these brothers are mining up on a bench. They're losing quite a bit. Of Earlier on, they were getting some chunky gold. It sounds like they're struggling. Miles deep into the back country of northern British Columbia, fighting their way to a 610 acre site in the Cassir region. A miner pulled out the 52 ounce turn again nugget from nearby Alice Shea Creek. Today, two brothers face a crisis moment in these historic hills on their own quest for big gold. Well, hopefully this... Oh, how was the drive in? Out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. No trees on the trail? Yeah, yeah, a couple trees. I've been on lots worse roads, but not a whole lot. Really remote here. Yeah. <laughs> Keith? Ready? Last, very Les. 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 Les and Keith. Les. Keith. Well, nice to meet you guys. Well, it's good to put a face to the names. Yeah. Yeah. How long are you getting in here? What, 12 years? 12 years total now, yeah. Okay. It's an adventure. So what do you guys do during the winter? Work in the oil field. Oh, that's great. Right. Always. Yep. Yeah. She can be hit and miss. Yep. For the past decade, 47-year-old Keith spent their summers hobby mining for nuggets when they heard about this remote mine. So I'm originally from Bonnie Below, get here from home. Got invited by a local, called the one-armed bandit. <laughs> Give us a grand tour and got ourselves a claim. And we came out panning out here and uh, kind of fell in love with the treasure hunt. We we're finding decent gold, so then it just kind of escalated from there. Well, I guess as we got older, we just uh, get along well. Well, I want to see if it'll blow apart. Out here, and I'm more of the mechanic. Isn't even a right size wrench. We work well together, especially when you're living with somebody for four months. A little more here. It's a lot simpler just with the two of us. We gotta work a little harder, maybe, but it works for us. Good. All of our gold in the beginning was chunkier gold. By year three or four, we were starting to get profitable. But now, the gold is different. With their operation custom-built for chunky gold, they failed to turn a profit the past four higher financial risk. Our biggest problem, we're chasing this pay. No guarantees that we're in the right spot at the moment, but now, we're not seeing what the brothers dream to strike it rich and leave their jobs in the oil. You're basically just a number. I think at the last company I worked at, I was number 199, right? Here, I'm number one. Worst part about the oil, typically you're in some strange town or some camp somewhere, you know, working 12 hours a day. You miss the family life, you miss all the kids. Pretty much, we everything. can't keep going like this anymore. It's just, you know, we're just bleeding money essentially. Really hoping that Freddie and Juan can get us. Straight note, then I don't know where we're going to get the money from to mine next year. How'd you guys do last year? We actually didn't really mine a whole bunch last year. We uh, were having trouble okay. trying to regroup again. The gold that we're catching right now, we're not covering maintenance costs or anything like that. So, yeah. No. Can you show us some of it? <laughs> this is what we get. It's got fines in it, though, mixed in there. Definitely having troubles catching that fine stuff. Yeah. You know, whether it's a sluice problem or a water problem. What would you guys need out of this mountain to be able to make this profitable for you? Yeah, two ounces a day. Yeah. yeah. So you guys are trying to set this up so this is a little more stable for you. Time. 
your nest egg. You know, and uh, maybe stay at home during the winter. And there you go. Mm -hmm. We'd love to do a test run, but before we do the test run, can we take for a tour? Let's go look at it. Let's do Sounds a like a plan. Right. So this your wash plant? This is her. And we built that plant from scratch, trying to make the improvements, trying to capture as much gold as we can, and uh, we still haven't been able to figure it out. One thing in gold mining is when you see people, a lot of people get it in their heads that they're losing a tremendous amount of gold. Usually that's because of lack of gold in the ground. So this is your cut you're working in right now? Yeah, this is the one uh, we just opened up. At first glance, this doesn't look good. The no. material doesn't. So like down there where you showed where you were getting bigger gold before, you know, it's probably a side channel beside a glacier. It's just little pieces here and there that are left over from that being reworked. Yeah. If the side channel is exhausted, it will not be economically viable. Sure, it probably has some gold in it, but that doesn't look good at your upper lake hill. We've kind of got into, you know, kind of a different situation here than we're accustomed to. The ground doesn't. Let's run the plant. Run the plant. Well, we'll get fired up. Headed up the hill. Coming back up. Yeah, no water at the front. Okay, last first bucket going through. Copy. Keith feeds their low-grade pay dirt into a pre-wash, the twin deck shaker, where spray bars built out of two-inch pipe clean off the fine material that screens. It then passes through a nugget trap and into a distribution box of two-foot-wide, 20-foot-long sluice runs. The bigger rocks come out the end of the shaker into the tanks with his hoe. We probably uh, invested about half a million of our own money uh, into the property here and we have the same cost. If we can't uh, start to capture more gold and, and find some better pay dirt, you know, we might have to look at selling the property went up their whole life so far. It would be heartbreaking to not be able to come up here anymore. This my other half, Mickey. One of us, which one? <laughs> we have two daughters, Cersei and Seneca, seven and eight years old. Summer since they've been born. This actually has gold in it right here. The gold miners' daughters. The rocks are coming off dirty. One thing I noticed there is see that back spray bar? The water in there? Yeah, it's right all in the center there. You can kind of see it's kind of leaving a bunch of material on the side. Yeah. I see he's got those. Yeah. There's a bunch of material sticking up there. Yeah. last probably four years I guess and says more than what we're getting in returns and uh, right now it's not paying as late. Take a look at that box, Fred. How do those feel? Wind it over. The tops are pretty rough too, Fred. Those top nut. How's your pay dirt looking? Need me to come push some more up? Can you push that nail for me? The pay dirt that we're on now. I'm going to grab a little bit of off the end of the sluice, Greg. Right? Take a look at it. I agree. Find a place to pan it up. Sounds good. got some gold in here, Wano. Yeah. Really small stuff, yeah. I've got... Yeah, see I got, them up in the top yep. here? If we found that in half a pan, there's probably yep. more being lost. We took some samples, we found gold in them. That's enough gold that over time it can really add up. So that's the stuff we want to help them catch so they can put that gold in their pockets, not back. With limited pay remaining, Freddie calls time at the two-hour mark. Last bucket. Okay, the last bucket's going in. Copy. You know, these guys have been at it a long time, and they're actually both really smart guys. They know what they're doing. They are. They're the best bank. If we don't go out and look, we don't know. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. That's right. I don't know if we can fix it. Why? Like, insert material in there. So what we're going to have to do is uh, repurpose what they have on site to 
be able to get this plant to catch more gold because what they have right now up there it's not going to not seeing much if it's buried in the carpet we're going to see it it's not looking good in northern british columbia on the parody brother and one examine the result of the short two-hour run well first impressions from watching it run the good news is we do have a few every little bit help yep that's the goal is catch as much gold as you can yeah every piece that gets away is a piece that's not in your bank yeah. Yeah. well the plant's simple they've tried this and they've tried that and Nothing seemed to work for them to catch the gold in the ground. They've got all, they're all spaced the same. So sure, they're gonna catch any nuggets that's going through there, but we wanna catch the gold that's not getting caught now. I guess clean her up guys and we'll watch you do that. A little dirty. Definitely some gold in there. Well, we'll leave you at it. Hey guys. What do you think? Well, gotta dry it up. Let's see where we're at. To hit their daily goal of two ounces, this two-hour run needs to deliver 0.4 of an ounce. 0.20. It's a little lean, it's a, little, a little horrible. Yeah. I'm pretty discouraged. Put a lot of effort into getting that out and not getting a return. If gold is everywhere, it wouldn't be worth anything. So, unfortunately, that's not near what we need. We actually went down and pan some of the tailing coming off your sluice, and we did. But you're always going to be losing some gold. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But the less you lose, the more money's in your pocket. Exactly. Yeah. We need something to help fund our future here. Their cleanup right there isn't viable for you guys. You know, the equipment, even though it's just two of you, it's really not going to cut it. Right, exactly. Yeah. There's not even enough to, to cover the diesel that we ran in the generator to process it. So, you know, th things need to change. Hey, Freddie and our like that, we'll have to sell or move on and do something else. With the way from the nearest parts store, Freddie and Juan put their backwoods mining ingenuity to the test. Some pipe, some hose. There's more stuff over here, Fred. Let's take a look at this. There you go, boss man. Oh, go ahead. You know me. It's all kinds of neat. It isn't what we want, but it's what we got. Yeah, unfortunately. He's got and a few things we got. We might be able to make something work, huh? Yes, Wano. Yeah, here we go. Brian fan. Look at that sucker. You'd be an egg-cooking son of a... Chorizo con huevos? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Huevos rancheros. There we go. Yeah, my Spanish may suck, but I got lots of the foods down. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think the frying pan's gonna help us a lot. <laughs> you don't realize how far you are until you get out into a place like this where, you know, really, if I got a down trip, and uh, that's just not feasible. We don't have the time to do that, so we're gonna use as much of the material that they have here on site. Useful, the next step is a plan. What do you think, Juan? Well, I'm really thinking we need to focus on that sluice box, Fred. Hungarian rifles, for sure. They're yeah. spaced too narrow, you felt yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, if we can get in there and actually space them a little wider. Exactly. That little spray bar on there on the side. Well, it's spraying just like you said, Juan, straight down. If your stream is not hitting the material, it's not They're washing. Getting washed. Yeah. But if we don't get them on gold, or pay. The rocks are smaller and less gold, so we need to find them some old deep channel again. So, I think an ounce for the two of us. An ounce of gold a piece, then. I don't know. Well, why don't we do this, Fred? I feel heck of a whole lot better. Find better ground. Well, let's go chat with these guys, huh? Go from, go from there. Sounds good. Freddie and Juan have the wash plant. First, water from the back spray bar doesn't hit all the material they're feeding into the box. Leaving. Juan will build a new spray bar the width of the box to wash all pay dirt down evenly. Set up to only catch coarse gold and are spaced too tight. 
Juan and Freddy will modify the riffles, different kinds of gold, and prevent them from packing up. Finally, to adapt the sluices to catch a secondary nugget trap called a boil box and fit expanded metal riffles and custom carpets. Finding gold rich ground to run through the plant. How's it going, guys? Good, good. The sluice box, that top one. Yeah. And uh, you guys got it set up pretty good right now, but we're going to reconfigure nugget riffles to actually make them have different spacing. Right now, everything's the same. The same environment all the way down. We want to change that up, and by changing the riffle styles, it'll change the velocities as well. You've got all the material that's really up the under carpets, and we've got some of that carpet with us. You know, there's a lot to be repurposed out here, and really, you know, the amount of material that we need. We talked about it. It's carpet because you have almost everything things. we need. Yeah. Yeah. Two, three hundred bucks yeah. in material no. is all it'll be. No. But on top of that, you know, Freddie and I need to go through this plant or nothing. Yeah. So and I can come in and I'm all fresh. I've never seen it before, so everything's new to me. Yeah. On yeah, this property. Thing that we've oh, an ounce a piece at the end of the season and roughly three hundred bucks in material. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's something good plan to us, so Perfect. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Well, well, good with it. Pound it up. Thanks, Thanks, Freddie. Perfect. Thanks guys. Freddie mentioned that he would wanted to help prospect a little bit to find some more pay dirt. Freddie going prospecting with us could make the biggest difference here. Brothers' 610-acre property in a do-or-die hunt for good ground. Well, it's hard to on in here. There's been a lot of people in here over, you know, a hundred and some years. But you don't know what it means, right? Did they go in there? And did, did they just quit and decide to stop gold mining? Who knows? Found over there. You want to look where they did lots of work because. You'd have a gold rush, you'd have thousands of people show up. They came here, they'd stake a claim, yeah. and then they did all that work to get there, so they're gonna dig a hole somewhere. Exactly, yeah. It's just so hard. Now I don't know a hell of a lot more than I knew this morning. We can come in, we can help a miner, we can help their plant recover more gold, but this one's a little tough. Let's take a look at what you got. Okay, let's see what we got here. Yeah. Gambling that Freddie will make. You don't have any more flat bar over there, do you? Juan and Keith raid the boneyard for materials they can repurpose as part of the new two of those. They're a little light, but we're going to use as much of the material here on site to get this build done. Got some parts. Let's go to work, huh? Let's go put her together. How wide do you want to go on this one? You want to go with a wide one? Back on site, Juan revamps the riffle system to catch both coarse and fine gold. So we started here too? Have to. Thank you, sir. It's real simple. They're just little uh, square blocks we put in there, but we're actually using those to space the riffles so that way they're perfectly even on, on both riffle sets that we built. It's, it's not the same exact size. It varies from four inches all the way down to two. So there's a bunch of different changes in there. One configures each riffle individually, altering the space and angle to give gold every opportunity of settling in the middle. A certain piece of gold that may not like that change may like this one. Yeah. Within this riffle, we have probably nine changes in one riffle. Yeah, maybe one will take me with them. <laughs> I'd have you any day of the week, Keith. Pretty damn good. Uh, Except I gotta, I gotta compete that, bud. Well, we can't all both have the good looks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy with it. Right in, see? That's way easier than the way we had it before. Well, that looks good. One will also weld box designed to catch nuggets using a punch plate. He can then fill the rest of the sluice with fine gold catching riffles. Yeah. If we can cap that boil box off, cleaning surface that we have for more riffles. Yeah, if we can get that capped off, then that opens up the whole boxing. There you go. There you go. How many kids you got, Keith? I got four kids. Two boys from my previous, and then my two daughters with the. That's exactly what I got. You want to get them a little more involved, though? Oh, yeah. That would be uh, ideal in the end here if we get this thing set Rolling. up properly and one's a heavy duty mechanic, one's a truck driver. So, I mean, 
Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They'll fit right in. Yeah. <laughs> so you need that out here. Yes. <laughs> Great. He's probably spent more time here than his older brother Taylor. He really enjoys it. They both enjoyed this place too. And I see them both coming back. Yeah. One point now, could end up again. Yeah. Problem is, there's only two guys. <laughs> There's only so much you can do in a season two, right? Well, that's so, where you need to get your boys involved. And, you know, your uh, boys are old enough, yep. they kind of make it a family operation. There we are. Just bolt it out. Nice. That's it. Wish I could see into the ground. Half a mile from the wash plant. So up here is where the ditches are? Yeah. Detective Dodge hunts for a gully where gold may be concentrated. You said there's like seven miles of hand dog ditch is what we've Holy been told. Hell. Imagine digging through this, <laughs> these big rocks and stuff with yeah. a shovel. When old timers didn't have them, they dug ditches, sometimes many miles in length, to direct water to where it was needed. Indicator for you then up here. So yeah, that's a good clue that the old timers found the gold. They weren't gonna ditch it to where the gold wasn't. Definitely. So well, get drone up, huh? Yeah, we'll send her up. If I wreck it, it'll be the third drone I've crashed. <laughs> Following clues left by the old timers, Freddy hopes a bird's eye view of the landscape will identify the channel they were chasing. No. So this is the channel across here? Right there is a channel running straight across right here. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know this valley was here. But if the glacier had came through here and reconcentrated that material, it might be some sure was in here. Yeah. That might be something cool. There is a distinctive channel all the way across this hill that leads up to a valley over here. When the ice dammed up on both sides, looking at it on that drone, and water would have came across this hill and maybe reconcentrated some of this loose material up here. Hill. Freddy's theory? A glacier laden with nuggets snatched from veins in the mountain forced its way down the valley. A second glacier collided with the first, slowing down and eventually melting gold-bearing material into an ancient channel, which should be a gold-rich pastry. Half a mile. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got one idea, and I'll talk to Juan about it and see what he says, and maybe we'll have a look at it. We only have a limited amount of time here. One seeing him get excited is exciting for me, right? And, uh, you know, brings the confidence up a little bit that it might be a really good spot to go prospect. Get back in here and see what goes on. Only a day before the final test run. Captain, if you want to keep. Yeah, I'll keep on working on that plant. Yeah. Spray bars and all that stuff. We've got to help with their gold recovery, but. Unless they have gold to recover, that means not. Well, where it's got reconcentrated. Yeah. Yeah. We can get the track of, Yeah. Get in there and punch some holes. We can find some color. I'll be happy. Okay, move some trees out of the way a little bit. Freddy's narrowed down the area half a mile up the mountain from where the brothers are currently mining. I like this spot right here. Let's do it, let's see what lives here. Well, well, just a good looking spot. We've got a hill here, just a lower area here. So if water did run through here at one time to reconcentrate material, it's definitely got potential, whether or not it's got gold or not. We won't know for a bit. He looks for rounded river rocks. If the water ran through here, it would have concentrated the gold into a gold-rich pastry. It's all just glacial sand right here. I mean, there's probably a little bit of gold in it, but not very much. Down about, what, five, six feet, start to get into more gravelly stuff. Start to get into some bigger rocks, huh? Yeah, that one was pretty well-rounded. That bucket's looking better, huh? That looks like bedrock down there, maybe. Swing her over to the side here, would you, Les? Have a look at some. I like this. 
Yeah, it looks like a, a decom. I'm going to grab some of this material in the bucket. We can go pan it. Let's go right here, huh? Moment of truth. Yeah. Fingers crossed. some heavies in it that's a good sign 15 colors so that's better than a swift kick in the butt or something right yeah phenomenal it's 30 mesh eyes well that's a good sign if nothing i'm yeah. happy with it yeah, yeah. Well. found some let's do another pan feels great check her out proofs in the pudding, right? There was gold in every pan. They're gone better gold. We can run a second test here. They've got a hole we're digging, you know, could potentially be the future of the mine. We found some color in there. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. You hear one? Yeah, that's perfect right there. With one day left and a vital new pay streak identified, it's the sun to finish a critical final fix to the wash plant. Really, we're running out of time, so... We just gotta keep on working. We gotta get this done. Get one on there. Backside right here? Yeah. This is hopefully gonna give us a more even feed, which gives us a better opportunity of catching some of this fine gold down the bottom. Just a tad bit, but that's good. Be good? Cut out. We're ready to get the spray bar up top. Thank you, sir. There we are. Right there. That's pretty good. But what I'm seeing now, we're going to have water all the way across this box. No matter where the dirt sits, the water should be uh, helping push that dirt out. Good job. Perfect. I'm happy with that. We want to make sure that the sprayers are spraying the same way. Make sure that that flow wash box is pushing that material down to the screen. It looks really good. Thanks, Juan. No problem. This rescue is a little different. You know, there were so many things that we had to do, but that we had to help the guys try to locate some decent ground. I'm hoping with what Freddie was able to do and the changes we made to the plant is really going to help these guys out. But we won't know until we actually... Not this final test here. If the numbers aren't there, I'm not sure how many of us are going to be able to continue with where we're sitting at the moment. I just got a frantic radio call from Freddie. It's a big day at the mine site today, so he wants to pick out the right output. Well, what do you think, Juan? I'm, I'm conflicted. Let me look at that one, Fred. Let's get him out in the light. What about this one? Let me see that. All right, that might not be the one. I don't know. You got one more. Oh, in I got a bunch more. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it's the one right here, Freddie. I like that, that one. one. One to wear. Okay. What about pants? Should I wear these jeans or should I wear these jeans? Let me see. Let me look at these. Those are a bit too clean, I think. No, I'll wear those. Those, those are the these ones. Good? I picked out my shirt this morning. I pulled on my shirts out and took a look at them. And honestly, the way I picked it out was the one that smelled the best. <laughs> this one smells yeah, all right. I sniffed past it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, buddy. See Thanks, Juan Oak. Hey guys, before they do the final run, well, let's have a walk through, talk about the riffles and stuff. Freddie takes a closer look at the improvements Juan has made to the sloop. Well, you can kind of see, you know, what Juan did here. We talked about it, and we decided to put your coarse riffles low yep. there and spread more and actually pick up a bit more velocity on the lighter riffles okay. before it hits the coarse riffles. Yeah, get a chance of everything to you know, all, all the same exact riffle like we had on the last ones. There's there's quite a few more changes. More yeah. chances for that gold to get caught. That's going to stop it from packing up on us. Or greatly. They won't all pack up. And that one piece of gold that doesn't like the other situations may like that one. Especially with the fine gold. It's knowledge from, you know, they've got a lot of experience in this fine gold recovery. And uh, so, yeah, I was able to ask a lot of questions on things that I've had, 
you know, we're trying to find out. You guys ready to rock and roll? We're ready to we're up. Let's make some gold. The second test here, a little concerned um, how it's going to turn out. You know, hopefully, if there's no gold in this test, it's uh, back to the drawing board again. See if it's viable to continue operations out here. We'll do it. After a week of making major upgrades to the wash plant and a three-day prospect for better ground, Freddie is... excited about it. We're going to go ahead and get the equipment fired up and we're going to start running the plant. We're going to get some gold in the box. Hey, last first buck, Red. Start timing it. Nice. Keith and Les deliver over 0.4 of an ounce to keep them on track for their two ounce a day target. Well, these brave bars seems to be doing the trick, Les. Feel, go feel better. A lot better. Yeah, Wano. Looks good. Look at that. Perfectly clean. That's clean. That's clean. Yeah, you can eat off of it, Lord. It's perfect. Legendary caribou gold fields, 
were the multi-chilling to realize their dream of a family homestead and mining operation. These guys got a lot on the line and that they got and make like their own little homestead. The family's 2,000 acre property lies on Abu Creek from the 1860s Caribou Gold Rush, who recovered over a million ounces before he died. If the family can pick up a set for life. Hey guys. Hey. Oh. How you doing? Good, how you doing? Come on, I'm Roger. Roger, nice to meet you. Tristan? Taylor. Taylor, there's a lot of you guys. Holy yeah. smokes. Oh. There you how you doing? <laughs> and what's your name? I'm Kieran. Kieran. I'm in. What's what, Wayne? Wait. Nice to meet you, Wayne. What's the dog's name? Sam. 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 <laughs> Cute little guy. Well, the good news is I'm here. The bad news is the uh, truck broke down. I'm hoping uh, he'll be back here up in the next day. But I'm here, at least, and uh, we'll see what we can do for you guys. Awesome. So what happened to your... Oh, yeah? I thought it was Wayne. Yeah. Not Wayne, huh? <laughs> nah, Trommel had a breakdown here, but as I got it running, I just, just about karate chopped... So how long have you guys been running here? Really, on this site last year and just a few days this year. Oh, last summer, we were probably here two months. Really? But really? We broke down and stuff. So it was more troubleshooting than running. Okay. In their first season last year, boom. So Matt started digging here, and I think we found some money. This year, have joined them. So you guys have been running for about two days this year? Yeah, it's sort of two days. Really, on the plant, only two, three hours. Oh, really? Put in, that's it. Yeah. Have they been well, a good? Not great. So. <laughs> the last half hour was good. <laughs> Despite the extra hands, the family faced constant. We picked up this conveyor. So that's actually been a little bit of a fight for us, and I'm sure you guys will hate it as much as we do. <laughs> Turn a profit in the remaining 12 weeks, the Adams clan will be forced to abandon their dream of mining and living off the land. We have, oh. uh, yeah, little bits. This is last uh, year's. I don't know how much is there. Yeah. Maybe 10 ounces. Some flower gold in there. So what got you guys into mining? I grew up mining little bits with my grandfather and oh. my dad, but never on anything that kind of thing. And since then, it's been my dream to do this for real. When things got king again about how much fun I had with my dad and how much fun I could have with my own sons and how valuable it might be to them like it was to me. And I just decided to sell my business and go gold mine. Might be crazy, but that's what we're doing. Back home in Edmonton, Roger employed guttering business, so his decision to sell changed everything. We're not just here spending a little bit of money on a gold mine. We actually moved property, 150 acres, not too far from here. We intend to build houses there, but that's got to be funded by something. So this is uh, while we build other things. The boys are fully invested in this, but this is the only job they have. Until we put gold in the box, they're trusting me and come up big, hopefully. For them. This is our future right here. It's got to work. So far, Roger has invested over a million dollars. Teen of his extended family can live together off this homestead mine. Wow, it's not like families as well. Yeah, we really oh, yeah. laid it on the line a little bit. Like we, we're selling so, so. everything and moving out here and going gold mining. So it's all going into this. Well, we need at least 15 ounces a week. So that 15 ounces of a week is not an option. It's, it's a necessity yes. then. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'd love to start. Let's get this going. Great. Hold the button. Well, hey, it all started. That's the best part. Let's do it. Matt loads pay into the first bucket. The 60-foot conveyor provides an even flow of dirt up to the hopper where it's the material before it's sent into a 20-foot by 4-foot trommel, and then into 22-foot sluice runs. The are you nervous that Brady's not here? Are we going to get gold, or are we going to lose all our money and have to live in the bush? And solo, Juan has just four hours to assess holes in their operation and recommend fixes. Already, I spotted a few things that feels we're running too much material through that box. But if Freddie doesn't get here, I'm going to be limited to what, what I can do. You know, I can fabricate, I can, but when it comes down to really kind of reading the wash plane, you know, that's where Freddie really shines. I just want him to run. We'll watch it, observe, and then find him. Look at this little guy. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Sorry I'm late, man. No worries. Good to see you. You too. I'm fired up, but I'm here. 
So let's watch it run and see how we can help these guys. Roger, Freddie Mayer. How's it going, Fred? I wanted to show you a couple things that will make you spot yourself. Huge difference. Yeah. Nuts side starving. I think they probably ought to slow down. 70% of the material rushes down one side of the sluice. They're losing gold off the end. The way this material's been, you need to slow this down. We usually watch the run and don't say anything, but get your hands on. Our sluice box was packing up a little bit, so we slowed it down significantly. They had an electric motor, they took it off with a gas motor, because originally they were going to run a generator. But the kid, one of the brothers, just broke like he's got a lot to say. Our shoots, they're just pouring water everywhere. But it's just... What happened? No way. Motor just died on us. Turn the plant off. Sure, quit! With the motor dead, the plant needs to cut off immediately, or the trauma will clog with material. Shut her down! from the top end. Here, do it again. You gotta somehow block your face off on there. So it can't possible on this Yeah. Oh, there we go. Break your arm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, way, way older. <laughs> My dad is probably the ultimate uh, optimist, just walking around. I would say I'm nervous about it. You know, I quit my job out in the city and, you know, this is kind of a last resort for me right now, working and I, we don't like to be away from each other at all. But once we can bring some gold in, we can, you know, start a... I don't like the look of that. They probably got tons of dirt just right here. Almost one-tenth of this run's gold-rich pay has not even gone to the plant. Hey! Get the conveyor shut off. Shut it down. With two full hours left in the test. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shut it down. Shut it down. Hey! Don't, don't start the conveyor. It's bound up. coming down yeah. built up under here we should have realized Stand the belt off track and now it's jammed in in two hours the atoms need to get the conveyor belt back on track to finish the test run we can loosen it off don't pull too hard there you're right near a rip where to rip down there guys right here before we run it anymore in the condition that the belt is we already got a hole in it but we keep on running we run the risk of losing the five thousand dollar belt so I honestly think my opinion for the day. Yeah, I wouldn't run it anymore. But the conveyor belt isn't the only issue on the plant. That's not a proper tail wheel. Is a wing pulley. But they call them self-cleaning tail pulleys. Yep. If you would have had a wing pulley, it actually would have ejected that material out. Yeah. Like right now, this is off the belt, and Which they're going to. It's going to go underneath there, and it's going to get inside of there, and it's going to blow holes in the belt all the time. This is gonna be your biggest uh, bottleneck right now. Yeah. And it's gonna cost you the most amount of money and the most downtime. And it doesn't matter how much. Well, you look a little stressed, Roger. Yeah, I am stressed, yeah. It's it's a struggle not to be able to continue running this now, right? We gotta get the hours in. The only way to make money is to put through the yardage. You're so. absolutely right. Well, let's take a look at the box. It's nearly two hours is nothing to be happy about. It's supposed to work eight hours a day and supposed to be gold mining, not fixing problems. Well, we spent not exactly ideal that it's breaking down every hour. So, you know, we, we put a lot into it. We really want... What do you think, Wano? You know, he's got a lot of problems already, right? And that conveyor is going to be probably his biggest downfall. Yeah. You know, I, I love the fact that they're spending the grandkids. Yep. They're all here. Four generations. There's a little one. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. You know, and this is their dream. Exactly. Well, if it doesn't work, then they're all going to have to separate and count. A lot of pressure on us, Freddy. Well, we'll do the best we can. We always do. Let's do it. Look at this little guy mining. How's it going? Doing great. Good morning. Good morning. 40 miles from the mine, 
on the banks of the mighty Fraser River lies the one homestead. It's beautiful country in here. It is. So what's your game plan for the property here? We're going to be homesteading in a way. We're kind of on a delta here from the river, so yep. the soils are pretty decent yep. and a little eco-climate kind of thing in here. You can raise chickens, you can raise cows, fish it right here. Yeah, you bet. Matt's building his house out here and hopefully the rest of them can build on this property too. Gold mining, hoping the fact that we can basically live off the land, I think it's an ethereal thing to take gold out of the ground. But to turn this dream into what needs to clean up at least 15 ounces of gold a week. How's it going, guys? Good morning. You pan in the oversize? Yeah. Material from the two-hour run. Freddie and Juan get a mini master class in gold panning. It's a gold pan. It shows how to pan, bud. Son, Declan. We have four generations of gold miners here, and my grandfather was a gold miner as well, so that makes five. Here we go, buddy. Now we're going to get that gold on the bottom. Hey, now we're going to sweep. Sweep, sweep. You get it out. You can tell you got little kids because you can understand it. I did. You know, I speak your language, Freddy. Yep. You speak munchkin. <laughs> hey, now let's bring it back. Got a piece of gold right there, buddy? Right there, one of It's a rock. It's a rock. I wish I had a little nugget or something to throw in there. <laughs> Hold on, Freddy. Okay. Okay, let's swirl that around. Whoa! Is that? Whoa! Look at that! Look at that! What is that? Go! Look at that! Go take it to your dad. It's it's gold. My goodness. Or it does. Oh. Declan, obviously, he's special and very special to me. I have to be able to support him on this entirely to to be our future. And just about we should get about an ounce out of this. Thick enough, I would say. Doesn't look like what we were hoping to get. Yeah, I think we're gonna come up a bit short here, we'll see, but it looks like well, more than a bit. No, no, listen. That looks grim. It's horrible. Seven. The family need to run 10 straight hours a day to hit their weekly goal. So far. The most important thing is uh, Run getting that conveyor where we aren't shutting down the plant. Yeah, it's a yardage game. Yep. I was hoping we'd see a lot more. I think this summer is a big make or break type. Uh, I've been away from my kids, from my family. I feel like I've missed the whole year of my daughter's life almost. I have a house that getting electricity here and all that stuff too, that's a serious challenge, very expensive. But I want to be able to get it to the point where I can live in it for this. Bring me out here. If you can make it happen, you got something special oh, yeah. there. Just mine up the road, uh, you can't yeah. beat that. You know, you guys yeah. are here as a family. Yeah. So that's even better. So <laughs> we've, we've helped a few that didn't get along, so we like, oh, that's fine. So. Nice change of pace for us. <laughs> we really appreciate you guys coming out to help us. So, You know, we're not miracle workers, but... Uh, but we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Sounds great. Thanks, Thanks, guys. This is not just me. This is my family. This is us creating a life together as partners and friends. And and uh, if it doesn't work, so I, I really want this to work. That wasn't a very good cleanup. They only ran two hours yeah, before they broke. Uh, I think we need to get in here, Freddie, and, and really make up a plan for these guys because the truth is, you know, if anyone needs it, these guys need it. Yep. Less than five days to get the Adams family plant producing at least 15 ounces of gold a week to keep their gold steading dream alive. I'm to go to this ice cream shop we've seen and we can talk about it. Let's do it. Do it all right. Large banana milkshake, please. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate it. It's kind of nice to be working at a mine where we're only 15 minutes from an ice cream shop. Yeah, no, really, there's there's quite a bit to do here, and I want to try to kind of figure out what our timeline is looking like. Conveyors, they're a blessing or a curse. Yeah. And right now, I think they're set up properly, and that's going to be a big help because one, it increases production, and then two, it's going to keep their their production up as that's well. That's right. Keeps them running, yeah. falling far enough in off that conveyor. So. I think we need to move the conveyor forward. We do. Yeah. Well, and then that chute going out. That one side's getting favored with all that material. Yeah, we need to get a V chute to go out before it hits the sluice runs. 
you know, that tail pulley, that's actually what shut us down. Yeah, it's not a true tail pulley, no. it's a head pulley. So what I was thinking about is uh, actually designing a new tail wheel. It's a lot of work, but, wow. but I think really with, with what they got going on, that's really what they need. Yeah. The conveyor Freddie and Juan's fix shifted further over the hopper and attach an innovative broom wiper to clean the belt. The base, they'll switch out the problematic head pulley with a self-cleaning tail pulley. The sluices pack up on one side chute to evenly distribute pay and ensure they catch gold across the full width of the riffles. Two hours, so with these repairs, we ought to be able to have a full run. Yeah. So I like it. Well, let's finish our ice cream and a banana milkshake. It's usually peanut butter. They're out of peanut butter. Oh, no peanut butter? Okay, I was, I was wondering why. <laughs> First line of business, we want to move your conveyor up hill. You know there's gold in that pile, so instead of that material landing on the ground, we can get it. Let's shut the rain off. And you guys have like a one acre umbrella? No, that's all we yeah. need. Well, Let's get to work. Do all righty, thanks okay. guys. Freddie and Juan push forward with their first fix, moving the conveyor. Let's try that. Coming out just a little bit, we're going to lift it. We want to scoot it over. But the problem is the way they got it rigged, when they lift it up, it's going to turn on them. You want a strap to go around that? Yeah. See a moto with the winch. As we lift, we'll pull it back and get it into place where we need it. Tighten her up a bit, Juan. So everybody- Away from that cable, please. That cable's over a big freaking rock. Okay, you ready? Me and you. Okay, Juan, oh. it's pulling it, Juan. She's she going. Keep going. Okay. Oh, that's a handy pile of dirt to have. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Double check. Perfect. Done the lifting and moving, yes. We just got to pull this belt back now. It's all the way over, so we're going to try to straighten it out a little bit. Perfect, Wano. See Perfect. what it does, my friend. Yeah, it's coming. A little more? That works. Beauty, eh? The old guy does a little bit, yeah. <laughs> he's not old, he's only 78. My dad just turned uh, 69 today. His birthday's tomorrow. Okay, yeah. there you go. <laughs> awesome. Must be tough to be away from home, eh? That's uh, it. Is. I know when we were looking at going gold mining, you know, obviously the Yukon, if we had an opportunity with some ground up there, with our families like it's that. It's just tough, it's too so, tough. So that's why we decided to come this direction, and because it's here, we can actually live and, and make this home. Oh, you definitely miss out on a lot, though. How busy are you, Roger? What do you need? The measurements to build kind of a custom wiper for that conveyor. Pull the tape for me. To keep the belt as clean as possible, Freddy's custom. I'm pretty sure the belt's 36, unless it's some metric. Oh, you know what? We got a broken pillow block here. Oh, you're very... That's broke. Oh, shoot. This is now bent. That's what broke the bearing. Yeah, she's freaking bent. She's bent in three quarters of an inch. Yeah, this is a big one here. Good bearing. Then without that being fixed, this conveyor can't run. Because it'll tear itself apart. We need to find out if we can get this bearing. Easy. Easy to fix. We got a full day's work here, at least. On this top end for a couple guys. I can't run camp. Your plant's down right now. It's officially down. Yep. Day one. Hey, ready for Bad news, man. Bearing the top bent in. It's just destroyed. There's a day and a half work to fix this. Just that. It's not a ha ha deal. But without that fixed, everything else we're doing. Well, that changes everything. I, I honestly think maybe the idea of maybe doing a tail pulley is kind of out the window. It now. is now. We'll build some rock plows down lower. We can do those. To keep the rocks yeah. from getting find a bearing, but yeah. you know as well as I do, if we don't fix that, nothing yeah, else happens. We're dead in the water then. Yep. All right, buddy. Going good. Any luck on the bearing? No, no. I've done some calling around, couldn't find anything, but something occurred to me. My neighbor's just been gold mining here for years, and I know they got a seat can with a lot of stuff in it. I wonder if there's a chance maybe they would have some. Yeah, let's have a look. Freddie and Roger meet neighbor and old timer Stephen Keene. That's room. You bet. But what they're looking for 
is a needle in a haystack. No, in seven sixteenths. We need two and fifteen. That one's hot. Kicker here is it's, that's probably one of the best bearings you can get, but it's not going to fit. This is too wide. Keep looking, but this was kind of a long shot, thinking yeah. you might have it. I'm, well, I'm kind of sorry, I don't. But, well, no. you got it. It's just too good a bearing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Well, you're going to Prince George, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess so. Well, before I head back over to the mine, what can you tell me about the area here? Uh, 1860s, I think. Abu started here, and there's a couple shafts. Once down here by the castle, over on Rogers Land. Abu Creek was mined heavily by the Chinese during the 1860s gold scene. Chinese miners were more meticulous than others in the era. There was around 700 Chinese mistaken. I think Abu himself died here. Huh? And rumor has it that a lot of Chinese miners died. At Local superstition believes that the ghosts of those dead miners now haunt these claims and steal the gold. We thought we had what we needed there, but uh, these bearings are just too big of a situation. I gotta go to town now and start searching for the right ones. problems to fix already and now we got this uh we got this broken bearing so uh you know not ideal you know don't grab it when it hits the ground it's hot ah! missed my steel toe by an inch and a half if they run the conveyor with a bent frame the five thousand dollar belt will slide to one side and shred itself freddie must remove the cog and chain that attach the motor to the head pulley Take off the broken bearing, and finally, fit the new bearing, if Roger can find one. Stage one down. Got her. One piece down. I've seen guys take two days to get a bearing off before fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. Okay, I'm going to warm this up. Yeah. We'll get some heavy gloves on and she'll come off. Okay. She's coming. It's hot, boy. Got her. Uh, one part of the job's done. Full mining stuff. I, I find myself um, at 5 o'clock at the end of the day wanting to stay longer. Okay, yeah. There's good days and there's bad days, just like anything else. Yeah. Absolutely. You can have a bad day at the job when you're getting paid by the hour and you still get bad days out here and your plant's not running. You aren't getting a paycheck. Yeah. Bad days are real bad, but the good days are real good. That's right. To pursue his other passion. I sing in the band with my brothers. Matt writes all the music. I just get the pleasure of singing his lyrics. You might think gold mining is hard to make money, but it's real hard. Kind <laughs> yeah. of get up on our feet so that we can do that stuff in the winter time and gold mining in the summertime. We haven't talked. It's a big deal, I guess. So, yeah, but a big change for all of us. Are you ready to do some more surgery? Yes, sir. Let's do it. For a new bearing to fit correctly, ready at the bent frame to straighten it. Yep. Beautiful. It's pretty straight, huh? Nice. What'd you find? Got some good news. I think I got the exact one this time. Cool. cost a day so to get done we'll hit her again in the morning well Juan truly We're gonna build that hill pulley well now it's not even a possibility we don't have the time to do it just two days remaining 
Freddie and Juan are forced to revive day to day to, to get that distribution box done. And then I'll start working on the wipers and stuff, the rocks loads. Yeah. But before they can get going on the urgent work for the day, and have a new proposition for the family. You know, a lot of what we want to do is depending on the time we have, that tell pulley, it's kind of scrap the whole tail pulley idea. We don't have time to build one. We'll put multiple rock plows in front of that tail pulley. So if materials comes off and if we put some kind of wiper system at the top of it, that material is going to fall in that hopper instead of coming down that belt. And then a V shunt of your material and 70% of your gold going down that left side of that sluice. We had to slow you guys down during your first run, but we're hoping that by down the sluice run, you might be able to run a little more material. Awesome. Yep. Probably get another 20 yards an hour out of it. I know Kieran suffered an injury from that gas motor. What we'd like is motor. Yeah. So that being said, what we're kind of thinking as far as for the material, we're, we're looking at about $3,000 material. Yeah. Far, you know, as far as our labor, you know, we, we always hate doing it, but we'd like to see an ounce and a half of gold a piece. Yeah, we really need your guys' help because we got to get some gold. There's the next season, right? So, yeah. yeah. And, and the wiper and everything, you know, that's not only going to increase your production, but it's actually going to decrease your downtime as well. All right. So it's going to be a win-win. Because, you know, all that stuff, that's important. Put I mean, food on the table. Yeah. That's right. If you could eat mosquitoes in here, you guys would all weigh 400 pounds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trust you guys, we know you're good at what you do. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we're good to go that's on there. And another, another thing you'll get is you'll get, you know, what you learn from us while we're here. You know, what's your bad joke? Whether it's bad, yeah. good. Keep all those. Those are all free. Yeah. 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 Well, deal then, guys. Let's do it. Thank you so much. left. It's all hands on deck to complete essential fixes. One gets started on the critical v shoot. We really don't have a whole lot of time to get all the repairs done. There's more here than what we thought. Even with all the machines we have and all the equipment, it's still going to be really tight. Well, I'm going to try to use a broom at the top of that conveyor as a wiper. So we'll see what it does. I want to drill uh, roughly quarter inch holes here. Okay. That way we'll screw that broom in there, right? Sounds good. I've got the top job because my fingers don't work so good. Yeah, he might look like he's doing all the work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the older one between the two of us. I think I got, what, four years on you? You definitely have a little bit of company. Not too much. I mean, he knows who's boss, so. <laughs> I got a few welds I got to finish up, then I got to put the slicer in the middle, putting everything together. Got shocked and burned at the same time. Had some hot slag go down my pants. Something happens in me when I see it. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> That's gold fever. It's gold fever for my own gold. Yeah. Box than somebody else's. One's V shoot, designed to get the family the gold they need to fund their homestead, is ready to be installed. When all the concentrate in the middle of that V shoot, and then it'll actually evenly get dispersed between the two sluice runs. We will actually get better gold recovery that way. Are we clearing on that side? Yep, yeah, good here. Okay. We're gonna go left. We're gonna go in. Almost ground over. Are we looking over there, guys? Just a little tight, yeah? Yeah. If we go in flat, it might go. Yeah, I don't think it will. Very close, no way. Eh? I don't think it will. We'll watch. I guess it's just because these are angled a little bit right no, that's here. That's the only reason. It's on the top. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. What are you doing? Well, correcting my mistake right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Test looming. Juan must make last minute adjustments to the vital V shoot to get it to fit. We'll call that good. Ah, oh, much better. Looks good, but let's let's hope it works good, huh? Oh, I'm sure it'll work though. So. <laughs> oh, I'm super excited to see this V shoot run. This is huge, so is everything else that they've done. I know it's gonna work better. Let's hope we can get through four hours, and let's hope we can just continue running after that like crazy. Hey, Freddie, what's going on, buddy? Quick.
question for you. Yeah. I need some springs, compression springs. We can probably find some in town, but that's a three hour round for. Let me think about this for a second. You know we car? Well, it, if they're strong mind? enough. I don't know if it's gonna be, the car weighs quite a bit. My baby, Freddy. <laughs> I know. Steve Belchin, you guys in your cars. I know, I know. Yeah, I think that'd do it. Well, let me take them off for you. It keeps me from drinking, so. That's right. You're gonna drive me to drinking, buddy. There you go. If you gonna work? That'll work, one. No. You ever notice how the young guys don't get their fullest stop? <laughs> Roger's got the heavy piece. Springs in place to wipe the conveyor belt when running. This looks like it's gonna fit. It ought to work good, right? This is made for sweeping. So if we can get it off where it's falling down your sluice. Oh, so. they're a little bit off on the wind. Are they? So whoever drilled those holes in the conveyor, it's different. You know what I mean? Could be, yeah. yeah. Oh! No. You forgot that plate. For that plate. Yep. Because right, right. I measured it with that plate in there. That's it. Right. Well, we're going to have to open these holes up. Tip number two. Now compress those springs up quite a ways, kind of like I've got it here. Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you think? Looks good. Yeah, this is great. wants to see what the gold will be paying for stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. If I live out of town, I'm kind of a prepper guy. You know, make sure I have water and food and backup yeah. generator. So you got like 150 acres here, you said? Yeah, basically everything you can see is our, our property. Ready? So this is home sweet home. It's a bit tight, huh? Yeah, I can't complain. I got everything I need in this little thing. Other than the shower, that would be nice. There you go. It's Hard on short-legged guys. Yeah, <laughs> come on in. Well, that's a nice skid check. Yeah, just kind of a temporary thing, you know. Hopefully I can, you know, get yeah. me and my wife. It's, it's tough to come out and toss the rest of your life away and come out here and, you know, bank on gold, you know, being a success. We need some money to survive. So this your accommodations? Yeah, me, my fiance, and my two-year-old son. Are yeah, yeah, definitely going to be putting in some extra effort to upgrade out of a camper. Did you pick the best spot first, Matt? <laughs> We can't do any more, honestly, yeah. until we get some gold. And that's just the truth. <laughs> Your house uh, is dependent on gold. Totally. Yeah. So my wife and myself, we're about to have a third kid in two weeks. And the trailer, I think it's a neat concept. This is an absolute beautiful spot. Let's let's help you get enough gold where you can keep it and make your dreams come true. Yeah, sounds good. Bringing the boys into this, it has been, uh, you know, just adding a little extra stress. We just want to be able to... pounds of material 24 hours before the final test with the conveyor closer to the hopper the feeder we need to go four foot i'd say but it's jammed full of pay from the aborted first test well right now Freddie, it's too heavy to be able to material in there than the feeder weighs probably threefold so we're probably gonna have to get it all cleaned out so that way we can move it forward and get it in place yeah yeah the risky solution Tristan and Taylor must cut the cylinders that attach the grizzly bars to the feet about the dirt with the excavator. Real slow, real slow. Little more power. Yeah, that's it. You ready to lift it? Yep. in that feeder and I am a bit nervous about that because I don't want to wreck something up even more. That 
that's a couple thousand pounds out right there. Or so I hope Freddy can help us get to see a lot more gold in the box. I'm not playing games out here. This has got to work. The final fix on the conveyor, a rock plow designed to protect the tail pulley had prevented shutting down the plant. Sure this eye I'm putting on there is a place for us to tie our chains on because this is going to float on top of that belt. repair the belt any further damage could result in a costly and catastrophic setback for the operation see how that's been a hook and hook and hook and hook you know you got millions of pounds of material going up here so yeah. sooner or later it's going to tear itself apart we'll put a couple got her i think so Ooh, that's a good one pieces like that, Roger. We're just gonna nail and you start hooking it on something. If you don't get it trimmed off, pretty soon you're bleeding. It'll yeah. do the same thing to your belt. Good to know. Looks like they're getting ready to move that thing. Yeah, it's kind of a screw side. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually push it with the excavator. A little nervous about it, Freddy. Keep me on that skid. Yep, we'll have to go. As the most experienced operator, one takes on the risky job of moving the feeder. Got you clear? Clear? Okay, you're my eyes there, Taylor. Yep. Okay, coming at you. You know, we're kind of in a tight spot here right now. Are we sliding that way, though? No. Yep. Hang on. Other side, one oh. The ideal situation right now, he's got the electric control panel and the hydraulic pack right on the back there, so if I slip, I can take out the control panel and then we're completely screwed. Fuck them, it looks good. He's going more. Yep. Yeah, he's about to slip off, though. One oh. A delicate move with a 100-ton machine. The feeder must butt right up to the end of the convert. Yeah. So that the pay lends yep. directly on the belt. Slow, yeah. No. Well, shoot, guys. I'm pleased with it so far. Me too. One yep. step closer to production. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Tyler. It's great. Time in our career, we've done that without breaking it. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's do the test tomorrow. Let's do it. Good. You know, we've done air fix the problems with that conveyor and their feed system, but. Until the plant's running, you never know. I know originally you didn't want to have an electric motor on there, you know, especially your son actually breaking his arm, really back to electric with it. Absolutely. Electric motors are safer to operate and less likely to injure. Roger believes he's found one in power, the 20 foot trommel. So yeah, here's the motor. 10 horse, 480 volts. Well, that should work for us. How do you feel about with your son, your grandkids, and your great-grandkids, and your great-grandson out here as well? You think an old 80-year-old man can expect anything. This whole project is as much about family as it is about gold money. What you guys got going on here is a dream one. You know, I'd love to be able to do something with my family as well.
first test, Freddie and Juan had to slow the plant with sending so much material off the end of the run. That's even, guys. Good job. We can almost go up a little more, Brad. Feel that. Conveyor speed means more yards. And it just widen it up. I like the sound of that. Needs more gold in the box. I love gold mining out of the ground with your bare hands. That's looking damn good up there, Brady. Blood falling off. You can see it dropping off right. As part of the Freddie and Juan conveyor masterclass, they moved it closer. I'm gonna go look at this rock plow too. And they protected it. Perfect. That's running good. Xin chào mọi người, chào mừng mọi người đã đến với kênh đọc truyện của mình. Hôm nay chúng ta sẽ có tiếp chương 5 của bộ truyện Nhân cách lìa. Quý Minh Huệ với tôi hiểu Lan Việt sâu đúng không? Nhất thời không hiểu ý ông có gì, ông có ý gì. Quý Minh Huệ nhìn tôi hiểu Lan, sai hiện, tôi đã báo cáo xong rồi, là gọi bà đó hẳn. Tôi hiểu Lan đáp lại bằng một ánh mắt vô tội. Cô mở miệng, đang bị tiếp tục nặn thêm chút thông tin gì đó, thì nghe thấy có người phía sau, có người lên tiếng ở sau lưng cô. Nhìn từ xấu sảy thì nghi phạm là nam giới chuyển thành. Nhìn tổ chất thể lực của hắn ta có lẽ không tốt lắm, sức lực rất yếu. Cô quay đầu lại, đối diện với một đôi mắt hơi sách. Bọn họ đến hiện trường nhìn hết nửa tiếng đồng hồ, chỉ nhìn ra được một vài thông tin bề ngoài. Những người này vừa mở miệng đã bắt đầu phát họa đặc điểm của nguyên phạm, dù chỉ là tổ chức thể lực không tốt. Nhiều lúc trong các vụ án, chỉ những đặc điểm nhỏ bé này đã phải trần hung thủ. Tôi hiểu Lan cũng mặc kệ hai người không hề quen biết, hỏi, sao anh nhìn ra được? Người đàn ông không cảm thấy họ phạm, chỉ trên đất, tuyến ni lông. Phần đáy túi ni lông có dấu vết bị mòn nghiêm trọng, chứng tỏ bị kéo dưới đất một khoảng thời gian. Hắn nói xong lại nhanh chóng cầm lấy găng tay cao su mà chất đó tôi hiểu ra để ở trên vườn cây. Phần ngực của những sắc mèo này có dấu vết bị đâm thủ, từng cái hố máu cực kỳ đáng sợ xếp vào một hàng dài. Để mà vết thương không bằng phẳng, có dấu vết bị lôi kéo qua lại. Tay người thả nông nhẹ nhàng nâng sắc mèo lên, sau khi kiểm tra, Tay ngừng lại ở trên mắt mèo, lại nhẹ nhàng che lên đôi mắt đằng chừng lớn của mèo, khép mắt mèo lại, khiến nó trông đi bình yên hơn nhiều. Đây chắc là một con sao xăng cưa vỡ nhỏ. Anh ta là ai? Người của Tổng Cục à? Quý Minh Nghệ nhỏ giọng hỏi. Không biết, tôi hiểu Lan nói, không biết. Tôi mới nghe anh bất gọi anh ta là thằng bất con. Lúc này, một năm cảnh sát khác cả quá trình không nói câu nào mới hoảng hốt mở miệng thắc mắc rốt cuộc hai người có phải làm ngành này không vậy quý minh huệ tôi hiểu ra anh ấy là cựu cố vấn của đội tổng cục cảnh sát hình sự giải lâm năm cảnh sát nói xong lại vô cùng long trọng bổ sung bốn chữ thần tượng của tôi chúng ta sẽ sang đến chương 6, sự cụ cất quý minh huệ bị sáu chữ Đội tổng của cảnh sát hình sự làm cho chấn động. Sao chữ này có ý nghĩa gì không cần nói? Không biết. Thì bây giờ Quý Minh Nhuệ vẫn chỉ là một cảnh sát nhỏ bé vừa mới vào nghề, đang cố gắng trên con đường cao cấp đánh quái bắt tội phạm. Khi cảnh sát hình sự luôn là mục tiêu cuối cùng của anh ta. Dù như thế nào, dù như thế anh ta cũng không dám ước mơ xa vời có thể chen vào trong đội của tổng cục. Nam cảnh sát với tư cách là một fan đạt tiêu chuẩn, hành thức của thần tượng thuộc như lòng bàn tay. Anh ấy từng tham gia vào vụ án giết cả nhà ngày 19 tháng 7 ở thành phố Hoa Nam. Vụ án giết người liên hoàn mùng 2 tháng 9, vụ án tổng độc mùng 10 tháng 3. Tên gọi về thời gian gây án của những vụ án này như xếp đánh bên tai. Không có vụ án nào mà không gây chứng cậm, gợi gây chứng động một thời ở trong tỉnh. Ảnh hưởng cực tệ, quý minh nhẹ đang nghe, hoàn hồn lại từ trong câu văn cảm thán, đỉnh vãi. Nhận ra điểm giống nhau của những vụ án này. Ông chờ chút, những vụ án này cách hiện tại ít nhất cũng 10 năm rồi nhỉ. Ý anh ta nói đây đều là những vụ án cũ cách đây mười mấy năm. Quý Minh Nhuệ nhìn bóng dáng của Giải Lâm. Người đàn ông này đang lật đống máu thịt bầy nhầy mà tôi hiểu Lan không dám đụng. 
Nội thất của hắn thực ra rất nhẹ nhàng Giống như sợ quấy dày bọn chúng vậy Ngón tay dính máu sờ lên da thịt Kéo xuống từng chút Sọc theo vết xa Vì hiện trường xảy ra vụ án có nhiều máu Nên động tác này như thế nào Cũng khiến người ta sự tốc đáy Ánh mắt quý minh huệ mơ màng Không ngờ anh ta trông trẻ như vậy Mà tuổi tác đã lớn vậy rồi Được lớn vậy rồi Tôi hiểu ra cũng gật đầu Đúng vậy Tôi tưởng anh ta chỉ khoảng chừng 25 thôi chứ Năm vật xác ừ. Này không phải hai cái ngốc chứ Năm vật xác không nhìn bọn họ Như anh nhìn kẻ ngốc Vậy là mình đã tập xong phần chuyện này rồi nha mọi người ơi Cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi hết phim này của mình Còn bây giờ xin chào và hẹn gặp lại nhé Bye bye mọi người